It's one thing to imagine a sci-fi world and another thing entirely to make it a reality on film, especially on a budget. In my head, the world looks like Blade Runner or The Fifth Element or a Mobius graphic novel, but the reality? With independent movies, you do really have to understand your limitations, but also not let those be boundaries for the creativity. I'm down to like compromise and make pragmatic decisions. No compromises. <laughs> Hello, I'm Alden. I'm a filmmaker who's documenting the process of making a sci-fi short film so that you can learn from all our successes and failures along the way, showing you how it's done, not telling you. This production diary is about sci-fi world building and production design. Cyberpunk is one of my favorite sci-fi genres. I love a world where mega corporations are in power and people have to scrounge to get by with scraps. Maybe because that's what the world feels like these days. There's usually a lawless subculture in these cyberpunk worlds. And for this project, I'm basing that subculture on the underground world of homosexuals in the 1950s and 60s. A time before the gay rights movement when homosexuality was seen as a sickness and punished as a crime. And using the the elements of cyberpunk genre, of mega corporations, of extreme downfall of like capitalism and how that has affected queerness. So let's start with the mega corporations. In the script, I made an unnamed company. And the reason I don't want to name it is because I have some ideas for where this short can go, whether it exists as a longer feature or whether it exists as a series and I have some question marks. There's like the bigger, the bigger project has a company with a name, but I don't actually know if like, you know, there are multiple companies that are sort of battling each other and I wanna leave that open for later. The company is a massive conglomerate as if Apple, Google, Amazon, and Facebook all merged together and manufactured artificial intelligence and robotics. I was inspired by the Tyrell Corporation in Blade Runner the idea of this massive, powerful structure in the middle of a city. So I wanted this world to exist in a structure so big, it was basically a city itself. And if you worked for this company, you'd live in this mega structure, inspired by tech company campuses in Silicon Valley and company towns of yesteryear. An environment where it seems like you're given all of this freedom, but in reality, it almost feels like indentured servitude. So how do I pull off that tower? I figured I had three options. One, make the tower a burrow for this proof of concept and shoot it in New York City. And then add holograms and replace signs that you see on the street. Two, I could try making a miniature city. I watched the production diaries of the guys who made Slice of Life, which is a sci-fi short film inspired by Blade Runner. And I thought, well, they gave a tutorial of how they pulled off the miniature shoots. So maybe I could try something like that. Or three, I could try making a 3D model and do it entirely out of visual effects. You know, I'm I'm down to like compromise and, and make pragmatic decisions to get things done. No compromises. <laughs> That's Cheyenne Ford, the production designer of the film. Go check out our video about finding a crew and then you can meet the entire team that's working on the project. One of my favorite things about Cheyenne is that she's an enabler for going for it. So I decided let's not do the burrow version. Let's make a company tower and I'll give it a try in 3D. I've been teaching myself Blender for about a year. And I've done a lot of like graphics and maps and stuff like that for work. A lot of like COVID stats, but I haven't really done a lot of photorealistic work. And it's proving to be really challenging, a lot more challenging than I thought. The learning curve for software like Blender is extremely steep, but all of my expertise I use in filmmaking and in my editing day job, I learned from YouTube tutorials. Hey, what's up? Andrew Kramer here for videocopilot.net. When I was like 17, I would watch After Effects tutorials in my room instead of hanging out with friends. And so Andrew Kramer is the reason I'm here today. I've also been following a lot of Ian Hubert tutorials. Shout out to him, the one person that's, you know, fits in my heart next to Andrew Kramer. I started with some really rough mock-ups, just simple geometric shapes of something similar to the Tyrell Corporation, this kind of like flat pyramid with more towers on top. And then I found a dystopian cyberpunk building generator by Lesinski? Lesinski? And started playing around with it. And it kept glitching out a little bit, so I kind of dissected how he built it and then did it from scratch. It's just a lot of shapes and mirroring them and setting up arrays and uh, his textures, I looked at how he made them and recreated them. 
and basically got something that looks pretty similar to what his project fell had, but made it from scratch. And so I built the tower that way. There were some really awful renders, but eventually I got something I was actually really happy with. I'm trying to get something that looks photorealistic. I used the tutorial from the Slice of Life guys and took that technique for a miniature cityscape and applied that to doing various render passes in Blender to composite them all together in After Effects. The emission layer, the volume layer, the detail layer, using the EV and Cycles renderer within Blender and compositing them all together in After Effects. So I kind of mocked up, you know, the city and the towers and another set of towers in the background and did this kind of slow sweeping shot. I did a viewport render and I think it's good. It's a 15 second shot and I think that for this short short, it's going to be a really good opener. The thing about that though is like, it's taken so much time to get it together. I just go and work at it for two hours at a time, focusing on the smallest little detail and adding bit by bit by bit. And eventually it ends up looking pretty good. And you'll notice there, there's a little red logo at the top. This was one of the early iterations of the company logo, which was another process altogether. I love the iconography of Star Wars and Star Trek. Simple symbols that carry a ton of meaning. And I wanted the company logo in my film to feel the same way. Something that you see, you recognize on a poster, on a badge, on a shirt, and you know exactly what it means. So I made a ton of tests. Just playing with like geometric shapes, I wanted very much like a recognizable symbol. And I showed the first round to my motion designer friends and colleagues. Then I iterated on them again and showed them to Cheyenne. Cheyenne told me she liked truly the first logo that I did when I did a random like motion tracking test for the props. So I kind of like started from scratch from there and iterated and iterated. I've been pulling some references from like electronics imagery. So things, symbols for capacitors and transistors and trying to either basically just copy those or use them as inspiration for something else. So I eventually ended up with this icon, which is inspired by the capacitor symbol. This is that red logo that you saw on that test render. I thought I was completely done with the logo, but then when I showed it to Kevin, my boyfriend, when I showed it to Cheyenne, the production designer, Cheyenne didn't love it. She thought it looked too much like an unequal sign, which it kind of did. Kevin also thought it looked like the HRC logo. Shan sent me a couple of like extra sketches of some ideas. And so I kind of took that and did a whole new batch of potentials. And I think I just knocked off yesterday like 26 different designs. I used this inverter symbol and decided to use the negative space as the central design. And sort of like filled it back in with this shape, which I had in one of the mock-ups. I like fit it in this little triangle here and then added the circle and that's sort of how it came to be. Once I had the symbol though, I decided to make a bunch of company elements so I can see that symbol in context. And I think that that's super key when designing something like this. So I made digital screens and also alcohol bottle labels and seeing it in context, I was actually really into it. It's generic enough that it can be for everything, but also recognizable enough that when you see it popping up over and over again, you're gonna start recognizing like, oh, that is all connected. We're doing this proof of concept shoot at Bossa Nova, a bar in Brooklyn, New York. Go check out our last production diary about locations to see the long journey it took to lock that location. Now, originally I thought we could pull off the shoot without a production designer, which you'll remember from the Finding a Crew episode, but Cheyenne convinced me otherwise. And thank goodness she did. It's a bar and the bar that we have has a bunch of alcohol and like cluttered stuff on the shelves. Well, in this world, you don't have that competition between companies. Okay, well, we can show that aspect of the world by having, you don't have brands of liquor, you just have the state, whatever this alcoholic thing. So then you can create other rules like, okay, well, there's no paper. So there's no exchange of money. Okay, well, maybe if there's no paper, then there's screens. So then what can those screens say? So with independent movies, you do really have to understand your limitations, but also not let those be boundaries for the creativity and uh, just kind of create a rule system to work around that and create the world. Once you kind of create that world and you push that to the extremes and you see these rules on the illeg illegality of sexuality and you're like, oh my gosh, well, that's really extreme too. And you're like, well, it's not because that's something that we experience in our world. You know, there are um, laws and limitations on sexuality, unfortunately, in today's world. So 
uh, I feel like that message becomes more impactful when you can make the rest of the world seem so extreme and so bizarre. Mm -hmm. And then you can kind of point the focus to the very bizarre things in our world that we experience every day. But to make that effective, you really have to keep to a certain system so that you don't recognize other parts of our everyday world in the scenes. Cheyenne put together a list of items to either buy or rent, and I started swiping my card. I have been getting so many shipments because all the production design stuff is um, shipped to my place. This is, they're kind of like these ceramic light things. It is more of these. Using like olive oil bottles for the liquid bottles. Seeing these boxes stack up, it's kind of like dawning on me like, Oh my God, this is turning into a real film. This is insane. Oh, remember that company logo I made? Well, I was watching Star Trek Discovery and noticed a similar looking symbol. I didn't actually know what it was, so I went to Memory Alpha, which is the Star Trek Wikipedia, and ah, it's a Vulcan symbol. Infinite diversity and infinite combinations, or the idic. Well, fuck. Oh well, we'll call this an homage. Do you find these production diaries helpful? Let me know in the comments below and like the video and subscribe for more because our next episode is about cinematography. Me and Shirley will go over the references we're using for the visual aesthetic of the film, as well as doing all of the necessary camera tests before production.